Uhuru, brothers and sisters and comrades, this is Amali Shatella. I'm chairman of the African People's Socialist Party and I'm the leader of the Uhuru movement and the International African Revolution. I wanna welcome everybody for coming on today. As you know, uh, our intent is to speak to this uh, question of Meghan Markle uh, and uh, this uh, fairy tale uh, colonial uh, uh, story uh, that surrounds uh, her and uh, surrounds her relationship with the uh, Buckingham Palace and, and British royalty. Uh, as you have probably seen early on, uh, I had initiated the process where I thought we'd be talking about Meghan Markle and I retreated from that initially because uh, I'm concerned that uh, we use this time uh, in a way that's gonna really help uh, to forward uh, the understanding, our understanding uh, as African people uh, as the oppressed and exploited of the world, of the relationship that we have with our oppression, our exploitation, and what it's going to take to win our freedom. And uh, like most of you, I uh, was uh, almost overwhelmed by the count of, uh, by the amount of uh, media and uh, uh, stories that's been uh, thrown uh, in our faces surrounding this issue of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. And I have concluded subsequent to the initial thought that I had about doing uh, this uh, discussion uh, on Meghan Markle that it would be a good thing to do uh, because uh, most of what has uh, transpired uh, up to now in terms of any kind of analysis and discussion around uh, this issue has only contributed to our confusion and perhaps was uh, much of it was designed uh, to be misinforming and uh, to help us uh, come to the worst or uh, the wrong kinds of conclusions. And so uh, I think it's appropriate that we should, should engage in this discussion. And I, I know that uh, our approach to this discussion is gonna be different from what you've perceived up to now. All of us have, uh, are aware of the interview that was done of uh, the two actresses, Meghan Markle and uh, Oprah Winfrey along uh, with uh, Prince Harry, uh, that uh, it garnished, uh, it, 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 was, it got so much uh, attention uh, from all around the world. And it, uh, uh, it, it initiated extreme pressure on Buckingham Palace, that is to say, uh, the royal family of England, uh, uh, to the point that uh, I've, I've seen now that uh, Queen Elizabeth, uh, who was treated quite gently in that discussion that happened uh, with Oprah Winfrey, uh, between her and Markle and, and Harry, uh, that, uh, that uh, the queen uh, is, was saddened uh, by what, uh, what transpired in terms of that interview. And so that she's saying something that the family, the royal family is going to address this question uh, in privacy. It was something to watch uh, uh, and to behold, to see uh, the uh, fame uh, astonishment coming from uh, Oprah Winfrey, that uh, the, the possibility of uh, somebody in the royal family uh, being concerned about what color that baby was going to be that Meghan Markle uh, was going to give birth to that was the child of, uh, of Harry. And uh, uh, that uh, somehow uh, the family had uh, more or less disinherited uh, Harry and Meghan Markle and that uh, uh, Meghan Markle uh, uh, and Harry's children would not be in line uh, for the throne. Uh, so this discussion was something and it, it was put forth in a way uh, that people were exclaiming, you know, how, how racist it is and what an extraordinary thing. And some people were concerned because uh, the, the British uh, just had missed this grand opportunity uh, to, uh, sh uh, to show uh, the whole British Empire uh, that uh, that uh, the royal family uh, was a reflection of all of, uh, uh, of the parts of the empire, of the remaining parts of the empire. Uh, that that uh, uh, we have this dark uh, woman and going to have the dark children who would be a part uh, of uh, of this uh, this nobility now, and that how that could help to uh, soften and democratize the image of. Uh, of, uh, of uh, the, the royalty uh, in England. And so some people were saying that this is just a missed opportunity. It's, it's wonderful that bring them in and embrace them and show how England is a part of this era 
of inclusivity and, and people living together uh, uh, here. It's gonna be an example of how uh, 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 peoples all around the world can get along together and England is going to be uh, that kind of example. So that's, that's kind of sort of what we've been looking at uh, up to now. And uh, of course, you know, there are the stories about uh, the fact that uh, Meghan Markle's uh, father is a, is a conniving liar who, who announced that himself, that he's a liar. He's been hustling, making money off of her relationship. That is to say, Meghan Markle's relationship with Harry and the royal family, and that he's lied to the media, he's made money doing that. And then Meghan Markle's sister or half-sister or however it is that it is characterized uh, who uh, uh, is also hustling and saying, uh, making statements about Meghan Markle that she couldn't possibly know because they really have never lived together, but she's hustling as well and trying to make dollars, make money and make a reputation uh, from uh, the fact that Meghan Mar Markle uh, had married into uh, the royal family. We've seen all of that. And of course it's created uh, some kind of uh, distress uh, for some people and uh, astonishment for some people. But these are people who don't even understand like some of the questions even that you can see in popular uh, mediums about uh, monarchy and some of that uh, coming out of from England itself that popular television uh, series and shows and, and some of this even uh, and, and stories and not just British but uh, European monarchy altogether royalty uh, where people assassinate and kill uh, members uh, of their own families who might be coming too close to the throne, uh, might be uh, getting in the way of some other family member who they think should be uh, next in line for the throne. We've seen all of that kind of stuff happen. We know about that stuff, even if it's only uh, uh, given to us in some fictitious form. And much of it is not fictitious in the sense that this stuff happened and it does happen. People have poisoned each other uh, people have locked uh, family members in towers. I mean, uh, Alexander Dumas, uh, uh, the, the African who uh, lived in France for a long period of time and who became more or less the father of, uh, of French literature, who wrote all these stories about this kind of reality that's become popular even up today. The things that we read about the person in the iron mask and uh, part of the royalty that was locked up. So these stories are abound, uh, but they are fanciful stories. They are stories uh, uh, that probably enhances the whole romantic notion of, uh, of royalty and monarchy and, 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 and what this was all about. So when we look at uh, the Meghan Martha story, it is uh, a story that's full of drama. We have uh, a so-called uh, mixed race woman uh, from the United States who marries a British prince uh, fulfilling the fairy tale dream of millions of, of women who have been seduced by the idea of being swept off their feet uh, by a romantic uh, figment of the imagination of Europeans from the age from years ago that dressed up uh, the life of European royalty during the Middle Ages. You know, this is where you have the knight in shining armor who rise up, and this is something that's projected even uh, today. You know, uh, uh, little girls uh, around. Uh, the world, uh, go uh, and get toys and dolls and things like that, uh, imagine themselves to be princes and who are gonna have this wonderful prince uh, that, uh, uh, that will, uh, that will uh, be their lovers and uh, uh, will, will take them uh, into uh, the palaces and live this happy, wonderful life uh, thereafter. And uh, so what we're looking at is really a form of government. When you start talking about things like kings and princes and, and, and queens, uh, this is a form of government that's called monarchy. And this was the form of government during the era of, uh, of in Europe, during the era of European feudalism, uh, that it was the form of government uh, and, a, and, a, and, a, and a political economy uh, that preceded, that came before the capitalist uh, uh, social system. Feudalism was a social system too. And, uh, and it preceded, it came before the capitalist social system that dominates the world today. And European feudalism was ended by revolutions uh, that overthrew monarchy as a form of government in most places in Europe. And England was one of the few exceptions where this did, did not happen completely. Now, I'm not denying that uh, this, this form of monarchy did not exist, that didn't exist in some other places. I'm not denying that it did exist. And in fact, it does exist. I mean, when you look at Saudi Arabia, the, 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 
uh, uh, the uh, uh, much some of what happened with this Arab Emirates and things like that. Uh, but what you're looking at then, there, and now is still a social, you're still looking at uh, governance that can constitute what might be called monarchy, but it happens uh, within the, under the total domination of the, of the capitalist system as a world economy. And even of much of what we look at in terms of Saudi Arabia and some of these other places were created uh, by the, the Europeans, uh, 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 imperialists who, uh, who carved it out and put the different uh, people in place. And so uh, when we look at what we call the, the monarchy in, in, in the Middle East, et cetera, it's something that's contextualized by the power of, uh, of European uh, 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 colonialism, European imperialism, the capitalist system that came from uh, the whole process of European monarchy and, uh, and the feudal system. And also, you know, this system exists in Thailand, there is monarchy and, they, and monarchy is a despotic, you know, they, they uh, uh, treat, achieve uh, their uh, uh, influence, their power, their significance, not through any relationship to the people. Uh, they uh, achieve their uh, significance through uh, uh, what uh, uh, was referred to uh, during uh, the period where feudalism really dominated uh, philosophy and ideology, a world outlook that said that the kings uh, had their power through, uh, uh, that they got their rights. It was divine rights, God-given rights to the king. So the people didn't give the king any rights. The people didn't give the queen any rights. The people didn't give any of them any rights, and they were not accountable to the people. It, they, they said that this is a time of divine rights of kings. And I think it's really important that when we look at monarchy, that's what we're talking about. We're talking about feudalism, particularly coming out of Europe, where the people had no rights, and, and, and uh, uh, which is one of the things that we find disturbing by sometimes African brothers and sisters who uh, try to describe each other in a way that uh, suggest uh, our influence and our power and our significance by addressing ourselves as kings and queens and things like that. And of course, this is too something that comes from uh, European monarchy and the idea that uh, being a king and a queen was, was just the highest uh, standard or the highest state of existence that a human being could happen. And so they had relegated the, the, the European uh, uh, feudalism, monarchy, and then capitalism had relegated black people to the lower state of uh, existence, of, of worthlessness, that uh, becoming kings and queens ourselves was uh, something that we use in terms of words to elevate ourselves to great significance, but you don't wanna be a king and you don't wanna be a queen uh, because this monarchy uh, comes from feudalism and it doesn't have any relationship or respect for the rights of the people is based on some supposed relationship that these people have with God and that they transfer power from themselves uh, to next in line in terms of their own families. And this is why you see uh, within the royal families of uh, people cutting each other's throats, uh, doing horrible things to make sure that their child uh, or, or they uh, would be the next in line to be the dominant uh, 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 ruler of the, of the kingdom. And so uh, what you look at is, uh, on the, on the European feudalism, which is what we are talking about, uh, the work wasn't done, the, the nobility didn't do any work, kings and queens, they didn't do any work. The work was done by serfs and peasants and, and they were tied to the land and feudalism was the next closest thing to slavery for white people in Europe, uh, except the peasants and serfs could not be bought uh, and sold as under a system of slavery, but they were permanently tied to the land. And, it is, and if the land was sold, uh, they went with the land that was owned by the nobility, the lords, the kings, the princes, the dukes, and the duchess, if you will. Uh, the peasants could not even keep all of what they produced on the land. Uh, most of it went to the nobility, the, the lords, et cetera. This is where the term landlord comes from uh, uh, that we are familiar with today. Uh, and uh, in, in the story of the mythological Robin Hood who robbed uh, uh, from, the, from the rich to give to the poor stems from this feudal era in England. The people had no rights uh, at all. And only thing they did was to grow food and to make resources that they turned over to the nobility, to the kings, the queens, the lords, uh, and the rest of that. That's how this whole system operated that people are glorifying today when they talk about the, uh, the royal family in Buckingham Palace 
uh, uh, in England. So uh, uh, the fact is that uh, much of what this feudalism looked like, you saw happen to African people in the Southern parts of the United States where we were sharecroppers, we worked, we were able to keep a, pen, a, 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 a tiny portion of what it is that we produce and the rest of it went uh, to, uh, to, to the landlord, the person who owned the land. We were sharecroppers on this land. This is, this is based on the same principles of feudalism that we are talking about. So it was, it was European slavery and colonialism, uh, which is the domination of Africa and Africans and other people and our resources that led to the revolution that ended European feudalism and brought capitalism into birth as a world economic system that we live under today. Uh, the European pirates, the slavers, the so-called explorer, explorers began to bring in so much money, so much loot, that they became richer and more powerful uh, than the monarchies, than the monarchs, than the, than the princes, than the, than the lords and the nobility and, and the kings and the queens who had previously monopolized uh, uh, the emerging economy of selling black people. They, they made revolution to overthrow the king and the ro no royalty and the entire feudal system because they wanted to control all the loot that was coming from colonial theft from other lands and peoples. They made revolutions in the name of free trade, uh, freedom to engage in slavery, challenging the monopoly on slave trading that, uh, that was held uh, by the nobility and the royal trading companies, like in England and other places. This is, this is what this, this struggle uh, emerged coming from colonial domination of peoples. And, and, and so this is where uh, the capitalist revolutions came from. They were called democratic revolutions because they freed the Europeans from feudalism, but they kept the system of colonial slavery in place. So they, they removed the system, uh, they freed Europeans from feudalism, but the process that, that freed Europeans from feudalism placed uh, and, and, and kept African people under, under colonial slavery. This is where capitalism came from. So, so the, the, this, this system of colonial slavery was kept in place and hundreds of millions of people were kept under savage colonial slavery so that capitalist freedom could be provided for Europeans and white people at our expense. And so this is the system that continues to dominate the world today. The major difference is that in the past under feudalism, colonialism was when Europeans went to other lands and simply stole the people's resources and then sent those resources back to Europe, their mother country as it was called. And many European colonizers began to want all the loot for themselves and fought what they call revolutions to keep from sending things back to Europe, like in the United States, and like in much of what is South America. Many also preferred uh, not to go back to Europe, uh, where they had less freedom, they had less money, they had less prestige, and they uh, uh, were able to steal from those of us they colonized when they were here. So they were called settler colonialists as distinguished from colonialism as it started in so many ways, now you had these settlers, these white people who came to our land, they came to South Africa, they came uh, to uh, Palestine, they came uh, to what we call the Americas, they came to New Zealand, they came to Canada, they came to Australia, they came all of these places and they settled there. And this became a part of the whole process of building the whole capitalist system. So Indians of India, Africans in Africa and throughout the world in places to which we were forcibly dispersed, along uh, with our people in Australia and the Pacifics, Mexicans, other indigenous of the Americas, all live under colonial capitalism today. But it has become necessary for the colonizer to claim that we are all the same, the colonizer and the colonized, the oppressed and the oppressor. Otherwise, the colonizers would rise up and take back our freedom and our resources. <laughs> so they claim that we're all citizens, uh, but our reality shows that this is a lie. Uh, this is why the whites live so much better than the rest of us, because they are the colonizers and we are the colonized. Uh, this is why the whites are protected by 
the laws that killed and imprisoned us regardless of what their constitution and other so-called sacred democratic documents claim to represent. The colonized will have to win our freedom and end the system of colonial slavery. In the same way, the Europeans won their freedom from feudalism. They made revolution. The colonized will have to make revolution also to overturn the system and free all of our people. Colonialism enslaves whole nations of people who are most often distinguished from the colonizer because the colonizers are mostly from Europe and they are white or otherwise foreign. This is why the description of colonized peoples as people of color is so dishonest. It's an attempt to say we are all the same, citizens, etc. It is an attempt to, to hide the total domination of our people by saying that the, our problem with the system of our oppression is because of our color. When the truth is that it is our color, or our nationality that helps the colonizer to identify us as colonized, even when we attempt to integrate or invade their neighborhoods or their royal palaces as a quote unquote person of color. Meghan Markle can aspire to be a British princess, but the colonizer and most colonizers know the truth. She, like the rest of us, is a colonial subject not even a citizen, which infers all the rights of the colonizer. But as badly as she has been treated, notwithstanding the slander from colonial media and the fact that her children will never be recognized as heirs to the British throne, her pain is nothing like that of the ordinary subjects of British or French or Israeli or US domestic or settler colonialism. Meghan Markle is like a lot of petty bourgeois or middle-class Africans who tried to find individual solutions for the social contradictions all the colonized people have to live with and fight against. This is partially because the colonial system will allow some success for colonized individuals, but always at the expense of the group whose success can only happen with the defeat of the system of colonialism. And so, you know, even though I spoke earlier about how Meghan Markle's children will never ascend to the throne, et cetera, uh, and even that is, should be uh, qualified. Uh, depending on how desperate the situation uh, happens to grow uh, for British uh, uh, colonialism, for British capitalism, for the empire, for the social system itself, uh, it is possible that even her children could become a part of the apparatus that serves to oppress and exploit the rest of us. You know, there's somebody who, you know, you know, we 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 want to have to remind people that you know here here uh, 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 Meghan Markle is sitting there with Prince Har uh, Harry, and Harry's own mama, if you remember, uh, was 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 killed by the British government. It is said, it is suspected, uh, uh, because uh, she was pregnant uh, with the, a baby uh, from an, an an Egyptian, another dark baby. It looks like the like uh, Diana and Harry have this uh, 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 appreciation for dark skin, this, uh, this movement, this, uh, affix, this uh, affix, uh, affix to this dark skin uh, situation. Uh, and Diana, of course, uh, Harry's mama was killed in 1997 in Paris to so do this wild car chase. She was killed in a tunnel uh, in Paris. And uh, 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 her, her lover and partner uh, was, uh, uh, an heir to uh, uh, the big Harad uh, dynasty, which is uh, the largest luxur luxury department store in the world. And uh, uh, her, her, her lover and the, the uh, father of the baby that she was supposedly carrying uh, was Dodi uh, Farad, uh, 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 Fayed rather. Uh, and uh, her, her, the father of Dodi uh, Fayed uh, was Mohammed Al Fayed. And Muhammad Alpha yet always claimed that it was the British government. It was MI6, uh, or, or uh, that uh, that's the, the CIA of uh, England, or MI5, which is like the FBI of England that, uh, that was responsible for killing uh, Diana uh, because she was carrying uh, 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 his son's uh, child. 
And so, uh, so the, the fact is that, uh, that the system will often allow a success for some colonized individuals, if it, but it comes at the expense of the group. They will not allow the group to be successful. They allow an individual to be successful. They allow, they allow, a, Kamala, allow a Kamala Harris, they allow a Barack Hussein Obama uh, to be successful, not the group. And in fact, the, the, the Obama and, and Harris can only be successful at the expense of the group. And what, I'm, what I mean by that in part is that if ba Obama had ever said anything about the oppression of African people, that's why he didn't. He's come up with some flimsy lie uh, subsequent to not being in power about why he couldn't call for reparations because he, would, he was going to get white pushback. Well, hell, yeah, you get white pushback. But if we have people who are living in Chicago in the housing projects who don't have the benefit of Secret Service police, who don't have the benefit of... Uh, of, a, of, of, of a Harvard uh, education, who don't have the benefit of the connection of the rich and the billionaires who supported him and they can call for reparations without being fearful of the white people. Why the hell could this guy do it? He couldn't do it because uh, he, he had to run a presidency, he had to run a campaign uh, uh, that allowed him you know, to, uh, to excel and become successful, but only at the expense of black people who he couldn't say reparations around. He couldn't say anything about raising up the African community. He couldn't have even been elected because white people would not have elected him uh, if he had not, if he had said anything about black people. And that was really clear all across the board. And even Africans were apologizing for him saying, well, no, he can't say that because if he says that black people, white people won't elect him. Well, if he can't, if he can't get elected by speaking up for black people, then what the hell do we need him for in the first place? The fact is that there are elements in our own communities and they know it and they perfect the art of uh, sacrificing the interests of the masses of our people for their own, uh, because the, the, the col colonial system will allow individuals to succeed, but they will not allow the masses to succeed. O.J. Simpson could leave the housing project uh, in San Francisco, become successful football player, great football player. Uh, he, they give him a white wife, they give him a, a movie career, et cetera, until he messed that up in terms of how uh, he ended up dealing with that white wife. But he never went back. He never raised up and didn't even say anything about the Africans who were living in the housing projects anymore. So you get your success by, by, by removing yourself uh, as a significant force upholding your people. Look at the athletes uh, who make millions and millions of dollars. People come up to us all the time and saying, you know, all oh, these black people got money. They're athletes, they're movie stars, they're this and that. Won't they contribute to, no, they're not gonna contribute. They'll contribute to some, uh, some uh, uh, entity that has no consequence, that is neutral in terms of its significance. And that's what you saw, uh, even when you looked at Oprah Winfrey and looked at uh, Meghan Markle, you saw uh, two uh, uh, elements of black royalty, if you will, engaging with each other in a way that did not make the system uncomfortable at all, which is why they could not raise anything that was essentially significant. So we say that, uh, that, 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 that this is why I like to fight against our colonial uh, oppression, must be led by the colonized African working class who truly have nothing to lose but our chains. We have no illusions about climbing into bed with a colonizer, royalty or not. We have no aspirations for our children to inherit the colonizer's throne, at least not until after the revolutions and the privilege associated with royalty are dethroned to the advantage of the colonized under the leadership of our working class. Our greatest aspiration today is to keep our children out of the clutches of the colonial military or police or their prisons or systems of indoctrination and demoralization that they call schools. And, and, and I'm saying this just in reference to how that I know that there are elements of the African petty bourgeoisie and perhaps even some misguided, misdirected African people from the working class uh, who are really disappointed because Megan's children are not going to be able to ascend to uh, the royal family. They are not going to be in line uh, to become princes and, and things like that. Uh, despite the fact that increasingly many of us are becoming aware of where the whole colonial system comes from and what colonialism has done 
uh, in terms of enslaving uh, our people. And this is how Europeans, how white people escape from poverty, escape from colonialism, escape from feudalism, that rather they escape from feudalism uh, through colonialism, through robbing and looting Africans and other oppressed peoples around the world. The majority of the people on the planet Earth uh, uh, have now been sacrificed for, for so-called democratic rights for, for Europeans, for white people that gave rise to capitalism. So no, Megan, uh, there is no Santa Claus. And the tooth fairy is also a colonial invention. If you do not believe me, ask Nilajah and uh, Itimu or Mkali, who are children of Kobina and Aisha and Marcus Garvey Youth Program in Huntsville, Alabama. These are uh, elementary and middle school children. Or ask Brooklyn and Brianna and Zion and Aliyah. Uh, the elementary and middle school children of T'Chawa and Nzehi uh, and Masimba and Herdosia, Columbia, Bentham, and North St. Louis. And no matter how hard you try, Megan, you and your children, <clears throat> or whatever the latest fashionable name the colonizer has conferred upon us until we achieve national liberation and workers' power known as socialism. And Megan, I suspect it's too late for you but you can commit class suicide. You can abandon the interests of the petty bourgeoisie. You can abandon the interests of some kind of, of presumed royalty, royal family, royal rights uh, that came uh, at the expense of the enslaved. And you can commit class suicide and you can unite with the aspirations of the impoverished colonized masses of people around the world, many subject even today uh, to British uh, colonialism. Uh, and, and doing so uh, gives you an opportunity uh, to adjoin the advanced attachment, uh, the African People's Socialist Party, the African Socialist International. And you can do this just like everybody else who is participating in this discussion today to the African nation. Go to APSPUhuru.org. Join the revolution, not the royalty, not feudalism, not some step backwards uh, to a time uh, when, when even Europeans were cutting off the heads of nobility, trying to break free uh, from that. Join the revolution, join the party, go to APSPUhuru.org, Vanguard Up, Uhuru.